Well, good morning, everybody. I tried to prevail upon George to let me do this in Middle English, but he said, no, that wouldn't be a very good idea. So <laughs> it will be, it'll be just me speaking the way I normally do. Uh, it's good to be here this morning. And we look around and see this very lovely room in a beautiful campus and reflect that just a little over five decades ago, there was nothing here. Uh, well, there was something here, obviously, but it, it wasn't what we have today. It was uh, farmland. And this institution that uh, we're, we're in this morning did not just rise right up out of the farmland, up out of the cornfields, magically, mystically, like Brigadoon. There's something had to happen to, to make it do this, to make it come true, to make it happen. Uh, so ref reflecting on this gave me the idea for today's talk. And it requires uh, looking back to uh, a number of people who made enormous contributions to what happened. Uh, I've chosen to, uh, to focus on, but there are many, many others that could have been, been uh, looked at as well. So specifically, uh, Mr. Otto Pressbridge, uh, a former editor of the Saginaw News, and Dr. Samuel Davy Marble, the first president of not only Saginaw Valley College, but also of Delta College. The story of Saginaw Valley, now State University, is inextricably joined with the history of Delta College. So on the screen, there are two quotations. The first describing Mr. Pressbridge, and this comes from the volume of Saginaw Hall of Fame. There are several of these volumes. They're very, very nice. If, if you're not familiar with them, take a look sometime. The Hoyt Library in Saginaw has copies. Uh, so this is how he was described. Fair, honest, likable, understanding, businesslike, forceful, a stickler for accuracy, and a man of action as well as words but it was as a visionary okay, and a dreamer that he made his most important con impact on the Michigan scene. Uh, these words are quite similar to those that uh, Stuart Gross, also uh, an editor of the news, but uh, uh, later uh, a uh, here at Saginaw Valley College in the communications unit. Uh, he, speaking of Marble, was an innovator. He had a creative mind from which flowed ideas for the development of a local institution. He believed that if no one would do it for you, then you could do it yourself. Obstacles were to be overcome. If that was not possible, go around them through another door. Okay, so we back up. Uh, as early as 1949, Mr. Pressbridge had been sort of feeling out the idea for um, a comprehensive uh, institution of higher education in this area. Uh, the times as the fifth decade closed and the sixth began of the last century were ripe for such discussion. Uh, this is a fairly significant population base. Uh, it was not served by the four-year institutions in the state of Michigan, particularly if you think about the people on the thumb to the east of here. Uh, there was Central in Mount Pleasant, uh, then a little further off, MSU, Michigan State, in East Lansing, and then to the south, uh, the University of Michigan. Uh, there was, to be sure, 
a junior college in Bay City, and that was it, uh, operating on the third floor of Central High School. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Presbridge threw the newspaper and threw his contacts, his uh, acquaintances in the area began to promote this idea. Uh, he, was into, he was able to gain the support of school superintendents in the three cities, and also that of uh, Leland Doan, the CEO then of the Dow Chemical Company. So he was moving with, he was talking to some very influential people. So he's beginning to promote that idea for the school. Uh, it was suggested to him by his contacts that a study committee be formed. And this was done uh, first uh, with, with 10 people from each of the three cities for a committee of, set of uh, 30. And then this was expanded to uh, uh, 25 from each of the areas for a committee of 75, and then finally expanded to a committee of 100 from each of the three areas for a committee of 300. It's just an amazing accomplishment to work with such a large committee. Uh, the committee met, deliberated, and finally, in 1957, it was agreed uh, to go ahead with a plan for uh, a, a, a college in this area. The idea was to do this in two parts. First, to, to, to begin with the two-year school to be supported uh, financially by a tax base in the three counties. Uh, this was the first, this was to be the first uh, such supported institution in the state. Then the idea was once that got going, uh, two more years would be added to this, to this, uh, this uh, what became Delta College, to make it into a four-year school. Uh, it makes perfect sense. People will ask, you know, I, I've had conversations with people, why is it that we have two colleges, one here and one uh, in Bay County, just a few miles away? Well, that happened as a result of circumstances, which I will go into briefly, and, uh, and then the leadership of Dr. Marble. Uh, Dr. Marble was appointed in September 1958 to be the first president of Delta College. He came from Indiana fully expecting uh, to develop Delta into a four-year school. Well, things got complicated. <laughs> Some of you are chuckling, you know this story, okay. Uh, the Community College Association, as I understand it, uh, argued against this idea, uh, maintaining that uh, community colleges have particular missions which are different from four-year degree granting institutions. And they're right, they do. Uh, there was uh, at, at also, as the plans began to fully expand, uh, there became concerns about uh, types of faculty. Would there be a two-tier faculty, a faculty for the two-year college, a faculty for the four-year college? and the faculties became uh, uneasy about that. As hard as it seems to 
appreciate now what those who wanted a four-year school were faced with was if they were going to do this they needed to separate themselves not only academically from Delta but also physically that is they could not add on to the Delta uh, to Delta on their campus or even uh, contiguously to their campus, that is, to, to buy land abutting Delta's property. This is a daunting situation, of course. Uh, the area has just been through a, a dynamic a promotional uh, fundraising activity to get Delta started and off the ground, and then to turn around and do this all over again uh, is uh, uh, just a, a very huge task. And this is where Dr. Marble was so successful. Uh, he was a very engaging, charismatic speaker. I met him, I'm, I'm sorry, I met him only once, just uh, shortly after Dr. Gilbertson had become our president, uh, Dr. Marble was back on campus and I happened to meet the two of them and was introduced. But I've talked with many people who knew him and the words visionary, uh, articulate, again charismatic, all came out. He, he went around, he talked to people, he was a good, just a very good promoter for this effort. Uh, this was going to take money and through his leadership uh, and uh, a two million dollar grants, one from the Wicks Corporation and hence Wicks Hall, uh, Dr. Marble was able to raise four million dollars to really found SVSU and when, when it became right for, the, for SVSU to become a state university uh, then to use that as the um, well earnest money essentially for the states taking over the university. But even things like acquisition of land, you know you have the money okay to buy property uh, what are you going to buy? What are you going to look at? Uh, the, the Board of Directors had taken an option on property out uh, southwest of here at the junction or near the junction of Titabawasi and uh, Road and Midland Road uh, out near where Baines is, Apple Orchard is. That became controversial because of distances. It was fine for Midland, it was fine for Saginaw, it was a little too far away for Bay City to be happy with. So, uh, the board needed to reconsider uh, and looked at property in this area. Not immediately where we are now, but across Bay Road, sort of up on the rise uh, going towards Freeland. Uh, that was not successful. The township, as I understand it, had some concerns about infrastructure up there. So finally, this uh, tract um, was purchased. But it's so easy to say was purchased. It required drive, it required support of an idea of commitment there were 26 parcels of land in this block with Pierce on the south, Freeland on the north, Bay on the west, and Davis Road on the east. All of those purchases had to be negotiated individually. Some were very large, others were rather small. Uh, they represented uh, the ownership 
was represented families who had been on the land for a long time, uh, many German settlers in the area. And uh, Morris Brown, for whom Brown Hall is named, uh, went with the university uh, attorney around uh, visiting, talking with the uh, uh, owners, their stories of their meeting in, the, in, in kitchens, in farm kitchens, making the argument for giving up, for selling the land in the interest of the future of the area. Again, that vision of the future was being promoted. In the end, SVSU, which was then SVC, acquired all but one small parcel of land. And that parcel is still in private hands. It's a small, it was a, a business property up on Bay Road. It's still there. This one small building is still on that property. It's not being actively used anymore. Uh, the rest, uh, the university acquired. Uh, it was a long journey from the fall of 1964 when SVC, Saginaw Valley College, which began as a private college, opened its doors until now. Uh, the, the, the opening class, the first class, not the first class, but 119 students, 119 registered for class. It was kind of a leap of faith. Just imagine you're, you're, you're committing yourself to um, an experience, uh, a college that almost doesn't yet exist. Uh, it has a very small faculty, mostly made of adjunct, of adjunct faculty. Uh, it has no buildings yet on its own campus. Uh, the, first cl the classes for the first two years met at the lower level in Delta College. Uh, classes began here in the winter of, on this campus in the winter term 1967 in what we used to refer to as the Project 66 building, which is down on South Campus. Uh, today, it's part of the South Campus administrative structure. But um, students enrolled, they persevered, and finally, the first class was graduated, and those, that picture in the upper left shows uh, Dr. Sam Levine at the podium uh, presiding, and the first graduate uh, receiving her uh, degree, Rosalind Argyle, from President Marble. Uh, meanwhile, this campus here was being constructed, as you see here in the upper right. So, you know, it is amazing, and I wanted to get this right. I want to read uh, a conclusion. So, here we are, 32 years on at SVSU, with a fully developed, mature, four-year state university plus professional and graduate programs with a combined enrollment of just under 10,000 students. It's hovering right on the, right on the cusp of 10,000. We have rich academic and athletic programs, modest and, uh, a modern and attractive campus, strong community support, a diverse student population, strong faculty and staff. The future looks so bright uh, with what we have now. But imagine where this would have 
you know, how could those early people have seen this? I think they must have. Uh, certainly, there are all kinds of detailed plans and studies in the archives that show <coughs> what their impression of the campus was to be. Uh, but it was, it was all on the drawing board. It hadn't happened yet. So the vision of Otto Pressbridge, of Dr. Sam Marble, and many, many others. Uh, there are so many. You go around and look at the names on the buildings. Uh, Morris Brown, I've already mentioned. Uh, Arbery Fine Arts Building, uh, uh, recognizing the contributions made by uh, Ned and Honey Arbery of Midland. Curtis Hall, uh, Charles Curtis is uh, many, many years on the Board of Control. I think something like 37 years he served. Uh, Zano Library, Mel Zano, uh, of Saginaw, uh, and so it goes. Uh, so, many people had the vision of, for higher education, they worked at it, and the task has been achieved. But we don't stop here, right? As we keep going, we keep working. But it, it really is a great tribute to the people of this area that uh, this has happened. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you.